The free Yiddika Rebbe, whose Hilula we have this Shabbos, related that when his father, that's the Rebbe Nishmos Eden, the Rebbe Rashab, started going to Cheder, the Rebbe that Tzemach Tzedek at that time was still alive, and he then, for the Arayin Firin in Cheder, for bringing him into Cheder, as the custom was, he threw candies, and he said that this is coming from Malach Michal, Malach Michal is throwing these candies. And by the child, by the Rebbe Rashab, this was very, very much accepted. And he didn't want to eat these candies because they were so precious to him. Now, Erev Pesach, the minig was to check the pockets of the little children. So the Tzemach Tzedek called the Rebbe Rashab, the Rebbe Rashab again being a little boy, and asked him, where are these candies? And then he had to eat them up. Says the Rebbe, from this story, just like all stories of, of our Rabbeim, especially a story that happened with one of the Rabbeim, so surely we could take out a number of Hoyrois, and not only in regards to the Inir of Chinuch, as the story concludes over there, Atazah Chinuch, this is the type of Chinuch we have to have, and this itself is emphasized in our parsha in regards to Pesach, we need to be teaching our children when our child asks, etc. But in addition to the general idea of Chinuch, says the Rebbe, there's also various inyanim in the halachos of the Isser of Chomitz and the like, which, we can, which are also connected and we learn out and we learn about them in our parsha. Says the Rebbe, seemingly we need to understand, since these candies were by the Rebbe Rashab so precious that he clearly did not want to eat them, there was something so, so precious since they were given by the Tzemach Tzedek. So why is it that the Tzemach Tzedek specifically wanted that these candies should be eaten before Pesach and he didn't allow him to keep it later by selling it together with all the rest of the Chomets? Especially, says the Rebbe, that we find this sort of Hanaga, this sort of conduct by G'doyle Yisrael in connection to Shirayim that they got from a Tzedek that if there was someone that had some chametz, one of these things that had chametz, so they would sell it by Mechiras chametz. Says the Rebbe, since the Tzemach Tzedek did not say to do this, Tzemach Tzedek clearly didn't want this to happen, so seemingly we could be medayik that the Tzemach Tzedek in this particular case was of the opinion, either number one, that it's Asur, because since the Rebbe Rashab definitely wants to have it back after Pesach, that means he wants the chametz to exist, so he wants, it, he wants it to remain, so that might be a problem in then being able to sell it to the guy. If really you want to keep it, you want to have it. You want it in existence. You're not going to be happy if it disappears. Another reason that we could say is that the, that the, that, um, the selling to the guy wouldn't help because usually we say selling to a guy helps, even though it seems to be like some sort of trick or some sort of deception. You're clearly planning to get it back after Pesach. And L'Chathchila actually we say you are allowed to sell it to a guy, a guy that you know, even though that you know that the guy is not going to touch your chametz at all and will keep it for you till after Pesach and then he will return it to you. So why are we usually allowed to do that? Says the Rebbe, we might say that it's because it's only Midr Abonim. Now the Rebbe does not elaborate over here, but between the footnotes and the Svarim that the Rebbe is Metzayin to, seems to be that what the Rebbe is referring to is the opinion that says that Mechiras Chametz is only for things that are Asur Midr Abonim, meaning to say that Midr Raisa, if you made it Hefker, it's completely not yours anymore. But the Chachamim didn't want it. You should just make it Hefker, as we'll see later in the Sikha also why that is. And therefore, the Chacham wanted you to get rid of it. So by selling it, therefore, technically you made it Hefker already. So now it's only Medra Banan, you shouldn't have it. So for that, the sale is enough. And therefore, even though it's usually, it seems like a bit of a deception, but the Rabbanon, since it's in the Rabbanon, and they allowed you to make this deception, what seems to be a, as a deception. But in our case, since this Mechir is in a way of Haram and Ikeris, it's Mamesh a noticeable deception because you clearly want to hold on to it. And therefore, in this case, perhaps the Chachamim did not allow this sort of sale. So again, these are two Svaras that may be why the Tzemach Tzedek did not want that the candies should be sold. But the Rebbe says, really, you can't say this. Because number one, 
regards to the first point, that since you want to keep it, you want to have it, that might be a problem, says the Rebbe that the Alter Rebbe does not mention in Shulchan Aruch this Isur, that there's a problem if it is that you, because you want it to, you, you want it to remain, and that might cause a problem. Number two, as far as this thing that the sale of the Chametz is only, if it's a Adrabanon, says the Rebbe, according to most Poiskim, and especially according to the Alter Rebbe, Mechiras Chametz is actually a full, full sale. We're not speaking about any tricks, any deceptions. It's a Mechira Gemura that actually protects you from being over on Bal Yira, Bal Yimotze, even on the Diyaraisa level, not only if it's a Rabbanon, because the Chametz that you are selling is actually not included in what you are nullifying and making Hefker. So therefore, we're back to the original problem. What would, what would be the issue with selling these candies? Before dealing with this, the Rebbe now suggests another thing that could have been done. Seemingly, in the above-mentioned case with the candy, there could have been another way of how to keep the chametz and not needing to sell it to a goy. And that is, he could have made the hefker chametz before the time of the Isser. Now, even though Bittul nullifying the chametz, making the chametz hefker, only it helps minatoira, only midoy raisa, not to be over on the doy raisa, the kabal yiro, bal yimotse. As we learn out from the Pasek, from the lo yiro elacha, that no chamez should be seen, the lo yiro elacha shouldn't be seen to you, we learn out, shal choyataroya, you're only not allowed to see your own chamez, but you would be allowed to see somebody else's chamez or hefker's chamez. So even though midoy raisa, you're allowed to be at mafker, you're allowed to make it hefker and nullify it. The Chachamim, however, came and made a that Bittel and Hefker should not be enough, and you do have to destroy the Chachamim's B'poyal Mamish. So seemingly Hefker wouldn't be enough in our case, but the Rebbe says there's a way around it. And the Rebbe says that we could be Mafkir the Chachamim's not only in our, in our intention, in our hearts, and yet the Chachamim's should remain in our possession, that's where there's a real problem, as we'll soon see, but rather... When we are mafkir the chametz, take it out of our possession, put it into a rishus harabim, into a place that's actually hefker. Now you'll put it in a place where there's no people going there, because you want to, and, and then after Pesach, go and take it back. And seemingly, if you do that, you actually took care of both reasons of why the chachamim were not happy that you should just nullify your chametz. What are the two reasons? The two reasons are. Number one, because when you make something bottle and hefker, it's totally b'machshavte shaladim. For only relying on what you have in mind, so we're concerned maybe you didn't really fully have it in mind making it hefker. And therefore, the chachamim wanted you should actually get rid of the chachamim, take it out of your possession. Well, in this case, we did take it out of your possession. Another problem that the chachamim had with making it bottle and hefker is because of the issue, since you're so used to having the chachamim, it's very likely that you could forget the Isur. So if it's going to be in your possession, you might end up eating it, even if you made it Hefker. So the Chacham were concerned about it, they said, get rid of it. But now if we take it out of our possession, put it Hefker in the Rosh Hashanah, seemingly that should have taken care of the problem. In fact, the Rebbe says, we find clearly that you can do this Lechat Chila. Take out the Chumetz from your possession and make it Hefker, put it down in a place that's Hefker for everyone, and after Pesach to go and take it back. In fact, the Rebbe says, that he uses Lushen Kimedume, which means like, I think, it seems like, that it's actually found in the story of some Hasidim, those Hasidim that do uh, take Shirayim, or similar things, that they, uh, this is actually what they did. Now simply, why did it Tzemach Tzedek not say to do this? A simple reason you could say is, that even though it's true that we do find some opinions that you could make it Hefker before the time of the Isser, especially if you're going to put it down in a place of Hefker, and you could do that with having in mind that you're going to take it back after Pesach. However, says the Rebbe, from most other poiskim, it's mashma, that is, actually this is something that does not help. And in fact, that's why the Alter Rebbe paskins, that even if you played it, play, put it in a place that's hefker for everyone, you still need to be mafkir legamri, you still need to make it hefker completely with your mouth and in your heart. And not have in mind when you're making it hefker. That you're actually planning to take it back after Pesach if nobody else gets it. Because if that's what you have in mind, it's actually not considered full hefker. And it's considered as if it's still yours. Furthermore, says the Rebbe. And again, the Rebbe is quoting the halacha. That even chametz that was found in a place of hefker. 
that a yid puts there before the sixth hour on Erev Pesach because he didn't want to be over on Baal Yiroh, Baal Yimotzei, which as we said, you're allowed to do. And nevertheless, the halacha is that after, after Pesach, no yid is actually allowed to have hano from this chametz. So all of this might be the reason simply why the Tzamech Tzedek was not suggesting this idea of making it hefker. But the Rebbe says it's difficult to say that that's the case in our, in, in, in our situation. Why? First of all, says the Rebbe, we're speaking about candies over here, that it's not even 100% clear that there's actually chametz in them. Even if there is chametz, we're speaking about something called taruvis chametz. In other words, it might be a little tiny bit of a mixture of chametz, which before Pesach, if it's a little bit, it could actually be bottle beroiv, it could be nullified in a majority or, or even more bottle b'shishim. And therefore, there's no din of balyiro, balyimotze on these candies, at least not midoy raisa. Furthermore, the fact that Hefker doesn't help is, as we said, it, it, the reason why Hefker does, in, in this, why we're concerned about this idea of making it Hefker, is because then every person is just going to do this in order to be able to benefit from the chametz after Pesach. However, in our case, since we're speaking about that the Rebbe Rashab was not planning to use and to have benefit from these candies in any way whatsoever, he's not going to be definitely not going to be selling it. He he wants to hold these candies and they should be whole. They should be complete. In addition to the fact, which as we said before, it's only a suffix drabonon. And therefore, it's a question whether this taruvus chametz even needs to have hefker and beer, etc. Especially that we're speaking about an uncommon case over here. So it could be in this type of situation, the rabbanon lechatchila wouldn't even have a problem with making it, hef, with, with making it hefker. In other words, they wouldn't make this gzeira that hefker should be a problem. So therefore, we're still by the question, really, what would be the problem with making it hefker? Now, before going further, the Rebbe says that seemingly you could ask, the Rebbe is preempting something that you could have asked regarding this whole discussion. That perhaps the whole suggestion of selling and making hefker, in our case, maybe wouldn't have worked for a different reason. Because we're speaking about an object of a cotton of a child, that he could only be coined as something, but he cannot be makna. He can't actually sell something or make it hefker. Because by a, so, so that, that could be a question. Why are we even discussing the option of making it hefker or selling? So the Rebbe says, why is that not a problem? Because when we speak about a cotton in other words, a child that's relying on his father, he eats by his father's table, etc. So the halacha actually is that the things, for example, something that he finds or a gift that he gets, actually all belongs to his father. And therefore, it's the father's obligation to sell it or to make it hefker. So it's not a question about oh, that the child won't be able to sell it and make it hefker. We're speaking about the, his father should have done that. The Rebbe says it's for the same reason also that we can't start being medayik from this story and saying, ah, oh, that shows you that it's according to that Samach Tzedek, a cotton is warned about Baal Yiro, Baal Yimotze, and you must make sure that he doesn't have chametz. And you might be medayik that a chametz of a cotton that Pesach passed over it will be Osir Bano. Maybe we could be medayik all of this from what the Samach Tzedek doesn't want him to keep the chametz. So the Rebbe says, because you, why can't we be medayik all of this? Because in addition to this, again, number one, it wasn't even necessarily vaday chametz. Again, al pidin, this was something all that belonged to his father, which is a godoil. And finally, the Rebbe says, bachlal tzorach iyun, whether really from this story we could take out halachos and the din of, and the isur of chametz and regards regarding every person, since again, we're speaking about chametz that are bonon, it's maybe only a possibility that it's chametz, a suffolk chametz, and it's a very unique thing that happened over here, something very uncommon. We're speaking about a house that was mahadr betachlus. So the question is really, as far as halacha is concerned, whether we could really say that this applies in all other cases. So, but again, we're back to the original question. What would have been the problem with selling it or making it hefker? Says the Rebbe, we're going to understand this behektim by first prefacing. The Rebbe says, al pi hashmua mechsidim. This is what chsidim had given over. Regarding the Anhaga of the Chsidim of our Rabbeim, that this is the way Chsidim generally behaved, that if they got some food or drink from the Rebbe, and if it was something that couldn't have been held over Pesach, meaning it's something that had Chametz, they would never sell it in the Chametz, but rather they ate it or drank it before Pesach. Says the Rebbe, the reason we could say is a very, very simple reason. 
The Rebbe says it's heipech kvoid rabbi. It's the opposite of the honor of your Rebbe to take the Rebbe's shirayim or the like food, things that you got that specifically the Rebbe gave it to you, and then go ahead and give it or sell it to a goy. The Rebbe now adds another point. Furthermore, this is going to be a discussion now for the whole continuation of the Sikha, or a big part of the next part of the Sikha. In a case where food or the like is being sold and going over to the Rishus, to the domain of the non-Jew, says the Rebbe Bechlal is Tzarechim, we need to now clarify whether, if when the Yid gets it back, when the Yid buys it back, whether there's any Kedusha of the Tzadik even remaining in this food. So this is going to be the next thing that the Rebbe wants to discuss over here, the two sides of that. Says the Rebbe L'choyre, to answer this, would depend on trying to clarify the very essence of what the Isra of Chametz and Pesach is. To use the expression of the Ragachavar. Is the Isra of Chametz, what the Ragachavar calls the Toyar, in other words, the title, the current description that it has, that means that this kind of food is Chametzdik, or, as we'll explain in a minute what that means, or is the Isur down to the very core, the very essence of this item. And it's, Ragachavar explains that this is actually what's d- dependent on the Machloikas and the Gemara between Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Shimon, whether Chametz after Pesach is Osir Bahano. Because if you say it's Osir Bahano, that's because he says the Isur is on the very, very essence of the item. In other words, the Isur had penetrated all the way to the very, very essence. According to the one that says after Pesach it's Mutar Bahano, is because the Chametz, the Isur of Chametz was only on this title, on the way this is a Chametz Dika item. But as soon as Pesach is over, this is sort of not considered a problem anymore. And therefore, there's no, no problem with the Hano. The Rebbe says this is also connected with another famous machloik between Rabbi Yehuda and the Chachamim. Rabbi Yehuda says that Ein bir chametz elo sreifa, that the only way of getting rid of chametz is by burning it. Chachamim say you actually have to that you, there's another way you could crumble it, you could throw it to the wind or throw it into the sea. So here again, there's a similar sort of idea that the Chachamim hold that the Easter of chametz is only in the toyar, in the description of the thing. In other words, just as it is a piece of chametz, an edible item, and therefore it would be enough to crumble it or to throw it to the wind or throw it into the city, into the, to crumble it and throw it into the wind or into the sea, which then you're losing this title, this description of chametz, and therefore automatically you also won't be able to eat it and have pleasure from it, although the essence of the chametz is still there. On the other hand, Rabbi Yehud is of the opinion that the Isra of Chametz is on the very, very essence. And therefore you have to completely, completely burn it. That you lose the very essence of, this, of the Metzius, of the Chametz. Not only its description or its ability to be able to eat and derive pleasure from it. Applying that now to our case. Says the Rebbe, if we say that the Isra of Chametz goes to the very essence of the item. And therefore, when you sell it to the Goy. You want to get rid of the whole Easter. So obviously you're selling the very, very essence of the Chametz. If you sold all of it, every aspect of it down to the essence, there is no tiny drop, there's no aspect in this Metzius that the previous Kedusha should sort of still be able to have some sort of Shaykhus to. Has nothing to hang on to. On the other hand, if we say the Chametz, the Easter of Chametz didn't go down to the very essence, it's only something additional to the essence. It's only the description of it. It's only the title. It's only as it has its current shape and form of food, etc. So therefore, you might say that when it comes to Mechir chametz, and you don't want to be over and Ba'yiro or Ba'yimotze, it might be sufficient just to sell that aspect that's connected with this title of chametz. In other words, not the essence of it, but only the more external aspects of it. And therefore the Kedusha still does remain. In other words, the person that had the Chametz originally still has some sort of connection with the very, very essence of the thing, where the Isra of Chametz didn't touch, but the essence of the food is still there, and that Kedusha is connected still to that essence, and therefore some of that Kedusha does still remain. And now applying it practically, so since the Halacha is like Rab Shimon, that Chametz after Pesach is Mutar Bahano. And that the Isur, the only reason, you are allowed to have Anah from it. In other words, it's not down to the essence, basically. And the only reason for this Isur to have the, it, it, to, to not have de- derived pleasure from it is only as a Knas, but it's not that it's actually an essence Osur. 
And so too when it comes to beer chametz. The halacha is really that it doesn't need to be absolutely burnt. It's only a minute to burn it. But really it would be enough to crumble it, throw it to the wind or th- and, throw, uh, and throw it to the sea. So therefore, if that's the case, what we're establishing seemingly is that the Isra had not gone down to the essence. So then, there is still some Kedusha remaining in it, and therefore the Chayra wouldn't be a problem then to sell the Shirayim of the Tzaddik to the Goy, because even afterwards that Kedusha still has something to hang on to and it's still remaining there. But the Rebbe says, really, we can't say this whole thing. Because even though it's true that, by, that, that the Mechira is not to be over, is not, not to be over on the Bayiro or Bayimotze. In other words, yes, so the idea is, again, even though the Mechira is because you don't want to be over on Bayiro or Bayimotze, however, most of the possible, in other words, so you might still say that it's only the external part of it, but the very essence of it is still remaining to, by the Yid. However, the Rebbe says, but really most post can do hold that the Mechira is a Mechira Gmur, even though you're only doing it for the sake of the Baal Yiroh, Baal Yimotzei, but really the Mechira is an absolute one down to the essence of the Chometz. It's completely, completely acquired by the Goy Midoy Raisa. Especially as the Alter Rebbe established the way Mechira's Chometz works, with what's called as an Orev Kablon, with a guarantor, so it's not only that the guy just owes you the money now for the rest of the chametz, but there's actually a yid guaranteeing it. So it's an absolute 100% sale. To the extent that the guy, if he wants, could go ahead and sell it to somebody else after Pesach. That means that the guy has a connection to the chametz down to the essence. Not only he's allowed to use the chametz, he's not only allowed to use the external parts of the chametz, in other words, just the, the benefits of it, but the very essence belongs to him. He can go ahead and sell it. Says the Rebbe, if that's the case, so now that would mean that the essence, if the essence is sold to the guy, that means the whole Kedusha would have been removed. So the Rebbe said, now we can understand why the Chassidim wouldn't want to sell a food that they got from the Rebbe to a guy, because not only, again, is it Heipach Kvoid Rabbi, that you're taking the Shirayim or the like, that you got from a Tzaddik and giving it over to the Rishus of a non-Jew. And remember, a guy is getting his highest from the Sholosh Klupis Atmeyers, so not only is it completely disrespectful, but again, chas v'sholem, you're removing the fact that up until now, Kedusha had some sort of hold or bylaws, ownership over this item, and now you're removing the ownership of Kedusha and chas v'sholem, giving it over, um, that it shouldn't have any of this Kedusha anymore. Says the Rebbe, according to this, will also understand what would be the problem with making it shirayim. With making the shirayim, excuse me, what would be the problem with making it hefker? taking the Shirayim of the Tzaddik and making it Hefker. So again, we're going to have a look at the Ragged Shover. The Gedder of Hefker, the Ragged Shover explains, can be explained in two ways. One way is that the idea of Hefker is that the owner removed himself from the item that he's making Hefker, and now it belongs to no one. That's one way of looking at it. The other way of looking at it is that now it actually sort of, in a certain sense, belongs to everyone. Every single person has some sort of right in acquiring this item. So it's again, either no one, or in some way it has a shaykhaz to everyone. With this, the Ragachavar explains the following machloikas in the Gemara, machloikas of, of Amiroim. So if a person drew water from a pit, a well of Hefker, on Yom Tif, and he took, drew the water, having in mind for his friend, for somebody else. Just before continuing, just to clarify the halacha, we know there's a halacha of Tchum Shabbos, you're not allowed to go out of 2,000 Amis from where you started off your Shabbos or your Yom Tif. Not only you're not allowed, but also your items are not allowed to go out from your same 2,000 Amis. Now you took water for someone else. So according to who is a 2,000 Amis going to go? This water, where is it allowed to travel to? How far could it go? Is it your 2,000 Amis? Or the 2,000 Amis based on the person who you filled it up for? Rab Nachman is of the opinion that it goes according to the person who the water was filled up for. That means the 2,000 Amis from the place where Shabbos or Yom Tov started are counted according to the place for who you took the water. Rav Sheshis is of the opinion that it goes according to the, to the feet, the person who filled the water. You're counting the 2,000 Amis by that person. The Gemara says, but my Mifligi, what is the Machloikas based on? So the Bachloik says the Gemara is that one holds that this pit, this well is considered Hefker, 
The other one says it's considered uh, that it's a that it's of shutfim of partners. What does this mean? So the Ragachover explains that really both Amoyroim consider that are, con- are considering we're speaking about that the boy that the boy is hefker that it belongs to no one. But what does it mean hefker? That itself is the question. So Rav Nachman is of the opinion that what does hefker mean? That everyone has some part in it. Hefker means it belongs to everyone. And therefore, even before the water was drawn from this pit, it belonged also for the... It, everyone had a part in it. Even the, uh, also the person for whom the water was taken. And therefore, it's considered like a boat of partners. And that's why it would be considered for the person who you filled it up. Because he had some sort of shaykhas that even before. He was like a partner in it. On the other hand, Rav Sheish is of the opinion, Hefker means it belongs to no one. And therefore, the person who filled it, he could take it for himself. But he can suddenly take it for someone else. In other words, the 2,000 Amis is not going to go for the other person. That's why it's going to go according to the person that now got it, now acquired it. So again, we have in Hefker these two ideas. Does it belong to no one? Does it belong to everyone? According to whichever way you look at Hefker, will be able to explain what the problem would be with making the food or drink of the tzaddik hefker. According to the svarah that hefker means that it belongs to everyone, so then it's obvious why we don't want to be mafker shirayim. For the same reason why we don't want to sell it to a non-Jew. Because what's happening when you're being at mafker, you're now causing that it belongs to all the goyim of the world. Especially, says the Rebbe, that it's specifically the Goyim, because the Yidden obviously don't want to have Chametz chametz on Pesach. So they're all removing themselves, their rights from the Hefker, and therefore just belonging all just to Goyim. And that is, as we said before, disrespectful for the covet of his Rebbe. The Rebbe says in a certain aspect, making it Hefker like this is even worse than selling it to the non-Jew. Why? When you sell it to the non-Jew, so you could look for a a Goy, that's Mechsideh Yom Yisraelim from the righteous Goyim, as the Rambam Paskins, that they have a chelik lo'elam abo, especially he's speaking about a goy, he's saving the yid from the Isr Chametz Bepesach, so obviously a good person, whereas you're making it hefker to everyone, that means it belongs to all the goyim, even those that are not chsidiyum isoylam, and therefore it's even more disrespectful as far as Kaved Rabbi is concerned. Now going to the uh, way of looking at it, that hefker is something that belongs to no one, the Rebbe says it's again understood. You're taking something so precious, a Dover Shebe Kedusha, that you got from your Rebbe, and believe Shalom, Hefker means you have to do with your full heart, with your full intentions. Just leaving it over in a place of Hefker, again, completely disrespectful, showing that it, that it doesn't have Cheshivas, that it doesn't have importance for you. And this is why the Tzemach Tzedek wanted that rather than these candies should belong to a Goy, or should become Hefker, Instead, his grandson, the Rebbe Rashab, should eat it up, and in that way, it's actually going to become part of Damu Basar Kapsari, part of the flesh and blood of the Rebbe Rashab. And the Rebbe concludes that from all of this, we have an amazing Hayra in the tremendous effort that we need to put into and how we should go about Chinuch. And the Rebbe says, the Rebbe is again preempting a question, seemingly, since these candies were so, so precious by the Rebbe Rashab, and this is why he kept them whole in his possession. To the extent he's even giving up on eating it, it should become part of him, part of his flesh and blood. And we said already, there really wouldn't be an Isur to make it Hefker or to sell it. So the Chahir is seemingly, we should have just sort of done this for his sake. Make him happy. Allow him to be able to keep it even after Pesach. And it would constantly remind him and inspire him to matters of Kedusha, remind him of the time he went into Cheder. Ah, you're going to say that deep down inside, the Panimi is the Kedusha was removed. And contemporarily, you went to a, 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 the Rishus of a non Jew. So, fine. So, this, uh, we're speaking about a three year old child. He doesn't even know about it. So, what's the big deal? Says the Rebbe. So, here we see the tremendous ishtadlus of how Chinuch has to be. And not only in matters of Dai Reis and Rabbanon, or even a Hidr Mitzvah, but even in things that are Minhagim and matters of Chasidim. And that every single thing has to be done with the absolute emes. And, and you have to do this even when things are, are not so easy. Even if it's in some way 
relative to the darga of this one being educated, the child, in a certain sense, it might be like a Mesiras Nefesh or Mesiras Harotzoin. He's not so excited about doing this. He would rather keep it. The Rebbe says, as we find this in a number of stories, also in regards to the Chinuch of the free the Rebbe himself. It says, the Rebbe, this is the way we accustom a child to the concept, not only what's called Lashanois Midois of Ativim, to change his natural Midois, but also, as Chassidus explains, Tivi is Midois of the very nature of his Midois. Which the Rebbe does not go into right away the difference between those two things. And the Rebbe says, and even though this Derech in Chinuch is being told regarding Yechidei Sgula, certain select individuals, Nesiyei Yisrael, Rabbeim, but since this was revealed to each and every one, it's also for all of us, and as the expression in the Sicha, which we quoted before, this is the type of Chinuch we have to have. And this Koyach we have from Rabbi Seinu Nesiyeinu, because Bosa, Reisha, Gufa, Ozel, the whole head follows the body, to go in their paths, paths to go in the direction and their ways that they showed us, Netzach Selavoyed forever and ever.